This week on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, we'll discuss the Tigers' latest matchup against the Minutemen of UMass. Later, we'll look ahead to the Tigers' next game against the Blue Hens of Delaware. Get ready, fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report begins now. Hello Tiger fans and welcome to the Towson Sports Network studios for another episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I'm your host Spiro Marikas. The Tigers welcomed the University of Massachusetts Minutemen this past Saturday into Johnny Unitas Stadium. It was the Tigers first CAA game of the year. Towson played a strong first half all around scoring two goals in each of the opening quarters while giving up only one. The first half made the game look like a blowout as the Tigers closed with a four goal to one lead over UMass, let's take a look at the highlights from the first half against the Minutemen. Towson moving left to right. Mavis comes down. He'll feed it back behind the cage to Drenner. Drenner in front to Park, shoots and scores. Nice feed from Ryan Drenner as he hits Spencer Parks about three yards from the crease. Joe moving left to right. Turns, passes back to his left to Mavis. Mavis comes down. Mavis shoots and scores. Justin Mavis with the goal, and that's his third of the year. And The Tigers lead 2-0, and there you go, getting both of your goals from your midfield. Drenner feeds it out to McCarty. Top of the box to Lynch. Lynch going to wind, shoot, and score. Mike Lynch with the goal. That's his second of the year, and it's 3-0 Towson with 8.22 to go here in the second quarter. To Andrew Sokol, work it back up top to Haggerty. Hegarty gets it out to the midfield circle to Muller. Muller comes down, feeds down low to Hegarty, feed in front, shot, score as they fed it to Grant Whiteway. Nice movement there by the Minutemen to Mabus, to Parks. Spencer, 10 yards from the crease, feeds it to the left to Siskin, shoots and scores! Little window washer move there, windshield wiper move, and uh, the goal for Max Siskin, and it's 4-1 to one as he's got his sixth of the year. Tries to feed in front but his home run pass is deflected, and UMass comes up with it with five seconds left. Work it down. Here comes Schroeder. Fires a shot at the buzzer, and it's wide, and the Tigers will go into halftime with a 4-1 to -one lead. Not only did the Tigers have that 4-1 to -one lead in the first half, but all four goals came from a different player. Joining me now, the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin. And, Coach, you've got your first CAA game of the year. You know your team's going to be a little bit pumped. Were you a little worried that maybe they'd be a little over-anxious starting the ball game? Wasn't too worried about that. We got a pretty uh, pretty senior and, and junior-laden team with a good experience. I knew all week in practice they seemed pretty excited, but I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned with them being you know, overly excited and causing you know, mistakes out there on the field early on. You know, we've had you know, quite a few games to this point, and CAA play just bumps up the intensity, but I think we played with pretty good poise. Now, UMass is a team that had struggled early in the year. We're playing very well coming into your game. They had won three games in a row. And they're a team that has given Towson fits over the last few years. Um, when you were ready for this game to begin, did you realize it was going to be probably a low-scoring game, even though UMass had been putting up some goals? I did. You know, I, again, a Towson-UMass game is, is a lot of times predicated on defense. You know, they're strong defensively, physical. Um, you know, we're, you know, this year having some pretty good success defensively. Um, you know, so I figured it'd be a little bit more of a battle. I didn't know if it, you know, how much, but both teams, you know, like to grind out possession time offensively, you know, making defenses really have to hunker down and play defense. Uh, and it played out that way. And luckily we were able to put more points on the board. Um, but both teams, you know, made some really good saves, you know, to help each other defensively in that. But we knew it was going to be a dogfight. So you go into halftime, it's four to one. What are you telling your team in the locker room at the half? Yeah, you know, they weren't doing anything too different than what we expected watching them on film um, from what they did in the first half of the game. So we were staying pretty true to our game plan. Um, you know, it wasn't too, too crazy. You know, we just really wanted to concentrate on those first five minutes coming out of halftime, something that we've struggled with a little bit uh, in, in past games uh, this, uh, this season, but also understanding the energy that UMass was probably going to come out with, being able to, to really counter that and be able to go beyond that for ourselves to have success early in that third quarter, 
given us that momentum into the second half. So it was 4-1 to one at the half. We have come to our first break. When we come back, we'll look at the second half of the Tigers' uh, first conference game of the year against UMass. The Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual with head coach Sean Nadlin returns right after these words. With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you, then together build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. This is where the legends live waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride. Pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible health care system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. We got the paper! Whoa! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed, I'll take it. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I'm Spiro Marikas. The Tigers stayed strong defensively in the second half against the Minutemen, only allowing two goals. Towson offensively moved the ball extremely well. As five Tigers finished the game with at least a goal, Mike Lynch led the Tigers with two. As the Tigers defeated UMass by a score of 6-3, to three, let's take a look at those second half highlights. As they've uh, shot five times in this third quarter and had zero goals to show for it. McCarty out front, wind, shot, score! Mike Lynch is second of the day. Until there. To Schrader. Schrader will feed down low, right way, one on one, nobody there, and he gets it past Tyler White. He's got both UMass goals today. Great pass there by, from Schrader. Hegarty passes to his right to Sokol. Work it down low, turn, shot, score, Mariano's. He was on the right side of the crease. And Tyler White didn't have much of a chance there. Passes back behind. There's, There's the stall warning. Parks has it behind the cage. Spencer feeds up top. Sider, wide, shoot, scores! Six to three Tigers. Joe Sider with his 21st goal of the season. This ball game is over and the Tigers have defeated UMass by a score of six to three. They go to seven and three on the year. More importantly, one and zero oh in the CAA. UMass falls to three and six and one and one in conference play. Redshirt junior Tyler White had a game high 14 saves in the goal while allowing only three to get past him. The Tigers now 1 0 in the CAA, 7 and 3 overall. They jump up to 16th in the national polls. Now, coach, your defense is number three in the country, giving up just 6.9 goals per game. And I, I know Tyler would say that. that his teammates back there are giving him a lot of help, even though he is playing tremendously well. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's who Tyler is. He believes in the guys around him. But when it comes down to it, and I think a few times in that UMass game, he, he stole a couple, you know, which obviously helps him and his confidence, but also you know, helps the defense and keeps those numbers low and, and helps us really you know, come away with a win like that. And you know, they had a couple of nice looks on the doorstep that he saved, uh, took one off the face um, in kind of a transition look. So, you know, Tyler's really been stepping up his game, and I think the defense around him has that's allowed them to increase, you know, their their game as well, and, and not, you know, get complacent, but be excited about, you know, playing better in front of him because he's been bailing them out in times, and he's doing the, making the saves that he needs to make, and, and Tyler's had a, you know, terrific run recently. 
Yeah, and because of that, he was named the USILA uh, Defensive Player of the Week this week. And JoJo Ostrander has just been named inside lacrosse's midseason uh, report as a second-team All-American candidate. Mm -hmm. So you've got two guys back there that are playing extremely well. And then your defensive middies also playing extremely well. Right, yeah, I think we're, we're very balanced. You know, from, from goalie, obviously, Tyler, and what he's doing in there, um, to the close defense and the continuity, even though we lost Andrew Cordes a few games ago, Nick Gorman stepped in and, and you know, filling in well, um, not as well as Andrew was playing, but he's, he's, he's helping out. And then those D middies and, and long stick middies are really playing, I think, uh, at a high level and allowing our defense to really flow. They're, everybody, and, and we see it in practice, the communication, which I think above all it is so vital to a, a defensive success. The communication and practice is transitioning to games, which is helping us be successful. Now, you were an All-American defensive player yourself. Can you sense frustration on the offense when you guys start making great plays against an offensive unit? You can. You can see it in their body language, um, which is something that you know gives you that much more to want to you know be able to make that next play, to, to make that stop, get the ground ball. Just gives you that much more confidence and more excitement as you play. So you read the other team's body language, whether it be they have a great look from maybe eight yards out and, and Tyler steals one, then you just see you know you see him be deflated, or you know you just the defense is flowing, and you're sliding, rotating, and you, you pick up a pass, or you know you get to them as they're catching the ball, causing a turnover, and getting up and out. And when the ball gets down, you look at their attack, and you know either they're bickering with each other, or you know their middies are, are kind of not really hustling into the hole. You know you look to feed off that as a defense, and really keep that energy going forward. So last year the Tigers beat UMass six to five. This year six to three. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll preview the Tigers' next game against the Delaware Blue Hens as the Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual returns right after these words. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. We got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed, I'll take it. Congrats. Aaron's makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you, then together build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide. Save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I'm Spiro Marikas. The Tigers have started this season hot, winning seven of their 10 games, including a win over UMass. that puts them at 1-0 in the CAA. They'll take their first place ranking up to Delaware this week to try to continue undefeated in the CAA. They'll take on the Fighting Blue Hens at 7 o'clock. Delaware in a bit of a slump as late as they uh, had some early wins against Bucknell and Holy Cross, but they've lost their last two games, including their CAA opener against Hofstra last week. You come into this game and, and your, your players are going to see that Delaware's 4-6. and six. They've lost their last two. St. Joe's beat them 14-6. to six. Hofstra beating them 9-5. to five. Any sense of maybe overconfidence this week in practice, or are you keeping them in check? Uh, luckily, or I guess fortunately, I really haven't had to do that too much. Our captains uh, have done a good job communicating that to the team, knowing that 
Delaware is just a, they're a dangerous team. You know, they, they can put up points. They play good defense. You know, for whatever reason, they haven't won as many games probably as they should have. Um, but our team knows, you know, any CAA game is going to be a battle. So you have to show up ready to play and, and know this is Delaware's senior day, uh, their last home game for their seniors. It's a night game. Um, they're going to be looking to get their first CAA win against us, and our guys are staying pretty focused against that. And it's, it's, it's a long-standing rivalry between these two schools. Right, yeah, that's, I mean, really doesn't need to be said. I, that's just something that Towson and Delaware are accustomed to. So regardless if, if we would be number one in the country and then they would be a non-ranked team, we knew we'd be going in, you know, very, very, you know, going to be very tested uh, or, or flip the scales, you know, same thing. We'd be going up there looking to test them, you know, regardless of their ranking or wins and losses, anything like that. You know, you got to show up and you got to be ready to play. In the loss to Hofstra, 9-5, to five, they did get four goals out of Brian Cormandy. What do you see from him as an offensive player? Terrific. Uh, he is probably one of the best athletes in Division One lacrosse. Uh, the kid is just extremely fast. His skill levels continue to improve over his years at Delaware. He's a guy that our, off, our, uh, our defense really has to pay attention to and then be able to support regardless of the matchup uh, that we have on him. Um, he's a guy that can generate a lot of offensive opportunities for him, whether it be his own shot or creating uh, slides and he's moving the ball. So he's a guy that we're extremely uh, aware of. In years past, Delaware has been very good at the face-off circle. This year they're struggling a little bit, down to 45%. Does that surprise you after all the years of success they had as a face-off unit? It does. It does surprise me a little bit. Um, their number one guy, I know he's been going through some injuries from the offseason into the season, so that's probably played into it a little bit. Um, but they're still, you know, still talented and you know, we got nothing to really hang our hat on as a face-off unit either. So it's going to be a battle. I think Alec is excited about the challenge. These are two guys that he's faced off against for a long time from high school uh, now into his sophomore year, um, you know, at Towson. So he's looking at the uh, at another great opportunity. His numbers, Alec Berkeley's numbers, are better this year than they were last year. What's been the difference for him? He's taken more draws. Um, last year, Connor Baguini took a lot of the draws for us. So I think just more experience is helping him. He's more comfortable. Um, you know, he still is starting to continue to figure out how much, you know, he can really do out there on the field. And I think confidence early on was, um, you know, not a, a huge, you know, a huge thing in his favor. So he needed to gain that experience to give him the confidence. You know, U, UMBC was a big piece of that and Mount St. Mary's and then games like that to help him understand that, you know, he can be pretty good when he's dialed in and focused. He's competing more in practice, which helps. You go into this game against UMass and, and the word finally came out that Andrew Hodgson is out for the year. Besides Andrew, you've been having problems getting production out of your midfield. You move Spencer Parks back, he's done well there. Mike Lynch comes up with two goals. You get four goals out of your middies in the, the UMass game, plus two assists from Ben McCarty. That had to make you feel a little bit better about your midfield. It did. You know, Mike Lynch is a guy that can generate his own shot pretty much at will. He's one of the faster guys on the team. He can run through slides. If a shot's going to be on cage, one is, a, is always a question, and is it going to be you know, in a good location and not right at the goalie is the other part. If he gets his hands free you know, and he takes a good fundamental shot, there's a good chance he can go in. So being able to, to get him to that point is a process. I'm glad he cashed in on two. Obviously, we want to see more of that. Justin Mavis you know, made a nice play and had a nice goal, had a couple of mental mistakes later in the game uh, that kind of caused some turnover issues. but. Midfield, we just need to play, you know, con consistent, much more consistent and much more efficient. You know, those guys are getting opportunities, getting shots. They're letting the offense work, whether it be the, the attack or uh, middies getting shots. So they're staying in tune with that. Uh, but obviously the goal production, you know, when we have the opportunities, needs to continue to increase. And they're aware of that, but they're also not pressing the issue as much as, um, you know, some would think with them not really producing as many goals as they have. And then there's Greg Cuccinello, who hit pipes again this past week just can't snake bit can't get it you know it's a matter of inches you think it's just get that first one and and, and then move on from there yeah hope yeah we'll, we'll take any that we can from greg right now and i know he'd be excited about that you know i'm just I'm, I'm impressed with how he's handled it you know he really hasn't tried to be selfish and take just shots that he shouldn't take he's really trying to play within the offense um he knows just as much as we do that you know he hasn't been scoring goals i'm sure the other teams know it um, but we still encourage him, take the shots. You know, he's in great position. You know, one falls, hopefully that just, you know, bursts open the, the, the gates and, you know, they all start falling. So we'll see. 
One other area. We mentioned you're number three in the country in, in goals allowed at 6.9 per game. You are also the number one team in the country in fewest turnovers per game at 11. That has to make you very, very happy. It does. It does. And, you know, I'm really wasn't aware of that. Um, you know, I look at the game and just kind of see how it's unfolding, if we're really playing well or not. And, you know, those things kind of tend to play out. But limiting your, your turnovers helps you maintain possession, helps you um, create offensive opportunities and makes the defense have to work uh, against you. So that's a, a great stat to go with our, our defensive stat. So we're excited. Well, we hope that continues this week against the Blue Hens. We have to take one final break. We will come back with more of the Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual right after this. This is where the legends live. Waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Strong can heal from miles away. Unite us for a common good. And turn a simple video into endless laughter. Strong can take you all the way to the summit. Think what Strong can do for you. Can I play too? <laughs> AT&T's network now has the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you, then together build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report, and Coach, thanks for joining us, and good luck against those Blue Hens. All right. Thanks so much, Spiro. Now, don't forget that the Tigers will take on the Blue Hens this Saturday night at 7 o'clock up at Delaware Stadium. If you can't make the game, you can follow all the action online for free at TowsonTigers.com starting at 645 with the pregame show hosted by myself and Hunter Lochte. Thanks for watching another episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual and Go Tigers!